Let's continue our discussion of the ANS and we'll now look at the chemicals okay, and receptors. So, so the neurotransmitters and receptors of the ANS. Now, let's do say this is the parasympathetic division. So, you have uh, the first neuron, the pre neuron comes in, synapses with a second, you know, with the post neuron, which then goes to its target. So, this is your autonomic ganglia here. Same here for the sympathetic nervous system. Incoming neuron, synapses with its post-ganglion neuron and the autonomic ganglia. Yeah. All right, now, in both divisions, para and sympa, this neuron releases ACA. That's a, that's a chemical, that's a new, the neurotransmitter that's released by both pre-ganglionic neurons in the ANS. So here, this chemical is acetylcholine, ACH. And so we call neurons that release ACH, those neurons are called cholinergic fibers. Cholinergic neurons or fibers. And then the second neurons in the pathway they, in the para division, again, they release ACH, acetylcholine. And so again, these are also cholinergic neurons, neurons that release ACH. Over here in, this, in the sympathetic division, they release instead They release norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. And so we call these your adrenergic fibers. Okay. Now let's look at the receptors. So the receptors that respond to ACH are called your cholinergic receptors, and they come in two types. Okay. So again. Cholinergic receptors okay, are either nicotinic or muscarinic. Muscarinic. So the at in the ganglia, the receptors there that respond to ACH, those receptors. are examples of nicotinic receptors. Same here. Those are the receptors that respond to ACH. Nicotinic receptors. Okay. And the act, well, let's keep going. So then the receptors at the target sites the ones that respond to ACH down here at the target are different. These are muscarinic receptors. And for norepinephrine, the receptors that respond to it are called adrenergic receptors. Specifically, you have, well, you, have two, you have two main classes of them, alpha and beta, adrenergic receptors. Okay. Now, in terms of EPSP or IPSPs, always at your nicotinic receptors, the effect is stimulatory. It's always stimulatory there. At the muscarinic receptors, it can be either way. Stimulatory or inhibitory, depending on, on the subtype of muscarinic receptors that you have. And same is true here. 
this one for the adrenergic receptors can be positive or inhibitory. So try to keep track of this chemistry, keep track of the chemicals that they release and what we call the neurons that make those chemicals. They either call cholinergic neurons or adrenergic neurons. Then the receptors that respond to them, you have your cholinergic receptors are either nicotinic or muscarinic. And the nicotinic ones are always in the ganglia. And the muscarinic ones are always on the target, the target cells. Okay? And the effects are always uh, excitatory at the nicotinic receptors and at the muscarinic ones, it can be either way. And same is true as well for the adrenergic receptors, it can be either plus, positive or, or negative effect. Okay, what else is that talking about here? Okay, all right, so we'll move on from there. Let's next look at <clears throat> the degree of activation by the para and sympathetic divisions. So the parasympathetic division, when, it's, when, it, when, it, when it gets to its target cell, so you have, typically, typically you have one pre-neuron that synapses with a single post-neuron that then goes to its target. Okay. And so it's one to one to one. And so, so this effect tends to be local. And very discreet, but very, very specific to a target. This is not the case for the sympa. In the sympa division, here the preneuron may have a bunch of branches, the branch profusely. Like so. And then each of these pre's will snaps with a different post. Which then give you different targets, right? So one neuron here, this one neuron here can activate multiple targets. So the sympathetic division does what we call mass activation or global activation. Many targets are simultaneously activated when the system, system, system is in place versus in para, it's usually one target for one neuron. Okay. But this one branches a lot, so you can, you can look for a more global effect. This explains things like, you know, why again, when you are scared, your heart rate goes up, eyes get big, your blood pressure goes up, these many these different systems are all engaged right away. Again, due to the extreme branching that takes place in the sympathetic division. Okay, now in terms of, let's look at, at something else. Look at how long the effects last for. So the duration of the effects. Back to Paris. Now the power division short-lived. The, the effects do not put, are not prolonged. Short-lived um, effects. And the reason why is that this is true, especially in the ganglia. In the ganglia, right, the ganglia, the, the autonomic ganglia, right? The ACH that's released, and this ACH is released out into the cleft. That's ACH. Acetylcholine. It is this in the, in the cleft. We also have another an enzyme called acetyl, acetyl, acetylcholine esterase. Okay, 
and this enzyme destroy quickly destroys ACH and as soon as it destroys ACH then the stimulation stops so, so it's a short lived because of a acetylcholine esterase enzyme destroys ACH to remove the stimulus. However, in the sympathetic situation, and that, that division is a bit different. So in sympathetic division, here you have, again, the incoming neuron and the post. Right. Here's the ganglia. So here now you have norepinephrine coming out. Right, so this is your norepinephrine inside the cut. So there are a few choices for it. So one choice, one option for norepinephrine is that it can be reabsorbed and reused. It's option one, reabsorption. Back into the pre-neuron, where again it can be it can be re-released or it can be destroyed by an enzyme called monoamine oxidase. MAO will then destroy it for you. Okay. That's one option. Another option is that it can diffuse out into the tissue. Right, into the tissue with another enzyme. Another enzyme called COMT, catecholamine methyltransferase COMT, that enzyme will destroy it for you. Or a third option is that most of it actually leaves the cleft and go into the blood. And in the blood, you don't have COMT or MAO, and so eventually the blood has passed through the liver where the enzyme in the liver will destroy it for you. But that takes time. And so while the, while the norepinephrine is now in the blood, it goes everywhere, it activates globally, and, and it's prolonged beyond the, the, the time of, of say, the, the, the fright or flight. Right? You run a race and you start running, and the heart rate is up for a while because it takes time to get rid of all of this norepinephrine, especially when, once it gets into the blood. It's there, it goes everywhere. It has an effect on wherever it touches. Okay, so that's why sympathetic lasts longer. These are longer lasting effects, longer than parasympathetic effects. Okay, and then most organs. Let's pause here.